What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Strange Cast, player one versus world like the Strange Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Adnan. My host Adam is here. Adam, you here? I'm I'm here. I'm alive. I I worked a twelve hour shift yesterday, but here I am. Well, you didn't complain about your last name at that point, did you? As you as no, we, uh... but because now, like, well, uh, you know, now now that we're talking about it, you know, we have another episode coming out next week. That's different and he didn't know how to pronounce my last name in that one he said you know his own last name but then he's like adam uh some weird european name blah, blah, blah. so yeah no i i took offense to that but he didn't yeah. know how to pronounce my last name which is how how is my last name pronounced evil yeah Do you, yeah so funny story before we start recording when i was uh when i was in college and i had a mentor for youth ministry all like all the time like he would introduce me to people and he pronounced me adam evolt and i'm like it's it's evolt he's like oh right sorry it happened five times like he kept introducing me adam evolt i'm like at, at the fourth time i was like i don't care evolt whatever fine evolt it is what it is <laughs> that, just add on to that this um american girl which i had um uh, you know some friendship thing that I had with her. Long story, let's not go into that, but she was like <laughs> initially scared to kind of say my name at first because she couldn't pronounce Adnan at first. She was like, I, don't, I feel really bad because I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong. And yeah, it was when, like, when, when I first uh, found out about you, when I first discovered you on the Twitters, um, I was even nervous. I was like, ooh. Like, and, uh, like when I had you on Games Grocery, I was like, I hope I'm saying his name right. I hope so. Adnan. Adnan. Whatever whatever like pronunciations that come out from it. Yeah, but um, anyway, can I get back on track? So basically, as Adam alluded to there, as, as I alluded to as well at the very beginning, this is a different Strangecast episode. So this is basically almost like a cassette tape. So this is episode 38A, and we also have episode 38B, which is basically mm-hmm. we split the episode up into two parts. Because our second episode, we have um, a special guest on, who's Jonathan Panetta, who is a musician, uh, produced Life is Strange music um, as a single. Uh, We kind of basically did this, and I was thinking about it, because usually we drop the full episode out, whether it's two hours, hour and a half, an hour long, um, for people to enjoy. But there's been things that have happened in the news, and obviously, like, you know, Harmony is going to be a big talking point today for us in in our podcast episode, and then other things. But I was kind of weighing up, I was like, you know, if I put this thing in the thumbnail, then Jonathan's not going to be there. And then if I put this in the title, again, Jonathan's not going to be mentioned. And because we put time and effort towards it, I kind of want to spotlight Jonathan. I don't want to just be an afterthought kind of being left behind. So I've kind of taken the cassette tape idea where we do tape A, tape B, and we kind of do it as a two-part episode. Uh, It's not clickbait. It's not, I don't, we're not asking for anything else like that. We're not trying to like diversify loads of videos, trying to like, you know, to get people's clicking on stuff. It's like, it's just how we felt a bit better in terms of how people could enjoy the episode where you could basically have a 50 minute interview as we do with him. And then you also have this segment as well, which is our news. So we kind of split it up for, uh, just for a better purpose of kind of like the structuring of this episode. So that's just to kind of highlight that. So this is going to be the first episode that will drop on the 15th of February, 15th mm-hmm. February, I think it's 15th February that will drop. And then the 22nd of February, the episode with Jonathan will drop. And then after that, we'll go 15th, back to the episode. Yep. And then episode 39 will drop the week after that. So we'll kind of go back on the schedule. But And, and in itself, you get more content from us, if anything, you know, if that's actually what you enjoy. <laughs> if anything, if you question like people who tune in and stuff, are like, do you really like us or not? Like, anyway, but as I said, that's just kind of clear that up very early on. And also as well, as I always ask as well, if you are new here, please do consider dropping us a subscribe, like, turn on notifications and share with your friends. It helps keep up to date with our content mainly. We are close to a thousand subscribers. We're about three shy at this point. Um, mm-hmm. And any kind of like people, you know, 50% of the traffic that comes to this channel is not subscribed. So if you are coming here regularly, please do consider dropping us a subscribe, not giving yes. some algorithm Stop. spiel. Stop freeloading. Get on the channel. Subscribe already. If I can Americanize it. We're going to drop about four subscribers because of that. Um, <laughs> but no, it just helps you keep up to date with our content. I don't want to do algorithm spiel. I just prefer if you stay up to date with us by helping support the channel. And also, StrangeCast is available on all podcast services. So it's available on Spotify with a video version. It's available on it's available on YouTube, obviously, if you're watching it here. And then it's also available on Apple Podcasts. It's available on every service, so you can definitely check us out, download the episodes, watch them, and also rate them if you are liking them. So we are back now. As I said, this is episode 38. This is 38A. This will just be all the episode throughout the entire thing um, in terms of news, and it will be spread the arts. And then 
the ending and then you'll get the next episode, which will, as I said, drop next week. So I'm here. Adam's here. My cat's here. So without further ado, we kick things off. So a big shout out to our Twitter follower and listener, Anthony, who tagged us in this. Um, and it's obviously news that Captain Spirit, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, I should add, will not be on Nintendo Switch. So we had a tweet from Bobby Croft um, here, which screenshotted part of the Life is Strange website. I tried to look for this website thing. I couldn't find it. Like, God only knows. But it's a question, like an FAQ that Square Enix have done before. And it just says, uh, does the port include Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit demo? They've replied saying, we were unfortunately unable to include the Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit demo as part as a part of the Life is Strange 2 Nintendo Switch package. We will be posting new and official playthrough of the Awesome Adventures Captain Spirit demo so that you can experience, uh, so that you can choose to experience Chris's side story as you play. Right. Adam, do you want to take this first? Do you want me to take it first? I'll take it first. Go. I'll... Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I need to emphasize that neither me nor Adnan are game developers. We don't know. We don't know what it takes to port something. I get it. I understand. I understand that we're stupid. I get that we're stupid. But at the same time, if you're able to port a a whole ass uh, a whole game as as it is, right? Um, how come we can't put in the same engine, the same game mechanics, uh, everything that's pretty much similar to Life is Strange 2 because this is pretty much uh, this was a game demo of Life is Strange 2 essentially uh Michelle and uh Luke like made this out to be like hey when you play Captain Spirit you're pretty much playing the same mechanics as you would in Life is Strange 2 so how come we we could port an entire game but we couldn't support the demo for it because it says like we were unfortunately unable to include this a two hour experience. And it's a timed experience too. It's not like, I don't know. It, it was all time-based. So it really was just a two hour demo to prequel this, this sort of game. Uh, and in fact, like I, I feel like it was important to include Captain Spirit because it does give context to Life is Strange Episode Two, uh, Life is Strange Two Episode Two. <laughs> Why couldn't we include this? I don't understand. But again, I'm stupid. I'm a little stupid boy who's never developed a game before, so I'm going to admit that I don't know my knowledge here. But it, it is kind of weird. And. Uh, one last thing before I let Adnan talk, um, you know, with his with his better accent than I do. But I was even telling my, my wife, Liz, you know, it, it's just like that little bit of annoyance. It's just that little bit of annoyance where we're like, you can play all the Life is Strange games on the Switch, <laughs> except for the two hour demo. And just like one of those things, like it doesn't matter in the end, but it's like one of those little things like, yeah, you can experience all of Life is Strange. Except the prequel, or, or like the prequel to uh, an episode that's within Life is Strange 2 that's not a prequel, but it's a sequel. So a prequel to a sequel to a episode 2. It's like that little bit of an annoyance. I'm like, oh, so close. So very close. But uh, whatever. I'm, I'm a stupid boy. Who knows? <clears throat> no, you're not a stupid boy. I think like yeah. the game's, the game's um, Life is Strange 2 I is digitally... Life is Strange 2 was digitally released anyway, so like this could have easily been included in the in the main menu screen of Life is Strange 2. They could have programmed it. I in know. And, uh, downloaded. It. I think I think there's, there's a cut cost cut cost cut costing expense here that's done yeah. anything. I just I don't think they can be bothered pouring it over. I think personally, even though the kind of like the word demo is used a lot with um with Life is Strange 2. Uh, sorry, Life is Strange 2. The the word Captain demo Spirit. is used a lot with Captain Spirit. I don't necessarily think it's a demo. I think it's a spin-off, if anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like, the way it's kind of positioned, it does kind of set itself up and very much is respectable as a spin-off. Like, I know people who like Captain Spirit more than other Life is Strange games. Like, it's a, it's a very, um, it's very um, you know, it's a very fitting story in terms of, like, it's very condensed, but it's, it's a still a, a narrative experience. And I think, like, yeah, you can put YouTube videos up on playthroughs. I think that that was kind of a telling sign for me for Square Enix doing that. I was like, yeah, they're not going to they're not going to be porting uh, Captain Spirit at this point, if they they're putting YouTube videos up as walkthroughs, but like you said, with Episode Two rules, it makes it doesn't really help the story. Then at that point, like you can still play Life is Strange Two, 
without having captain spirit but then the kind of significance of chris and then also his father kind of mm -hmm. like becomes a little bit diluted a little bit then you're kind of questioning why there's such an emphasis put on chris and it's like yeah but he was, he was in this entire like spin-off mm -hmm. kind of like story of it i get kind of like why you might not do it because captain spirit was kind of like set up as a as a kind of like tease yeah. for life is strange too it's like the the initial teaser obviously the ending kind of sets up for that because when we see the diaz brothers it's like oh actually that's life is strange too that's they're the main characters you know the diaz yeah brothers. but i still think like in itself it's a standalone experience that kind of accompanies it and i think like it's a missed opportunity for square enix they did it with um i know there's a lot of um humdrum drama about like metal gear Solid 5 when it was released their ground zeros yes. and phantom pain yes. and then they eventually released it together the konami they put a definitive experience and you got both the games at the same time uh later on but it's like i i, I even though even though if you want to see that game in a different light ground zeros is still a prologue it's still important to that kind of accompanying mm -hmm. piece and i think like just taking captain spirit away from this might project I, for example might you know, i say it's been a couple episodes since you brought up metal gear you were you're on a good track and now we're we're back on the Metal Gear. <laughs> we're back, baby. <laughs> we're back. Um, um, no, no, it's it, always my it's my go to usually. It's a good reference point. <laughs> but that's what I mean, though. It's just kind of like I'm on the fence with it. Like I'm I'm being facetious when I'm like like I'm being a character right now. Why I'm being so annoyed? Like first and foremost, this is a show. This is a podcast. I'm putting on a show. I'm being character. But if we're gonna be real, Adam Evil. I'm on the fence about it, where it's just like, I understand things have to happen. I understand that, like, there are costs that are put into this. But at the same time, I really want to know actually why. What, is it cut costs? Is it uh, tech technology that you just couldn't port it to the Switch and somehow because it is a time thing? It's just one of those things, like, well, like, why were you not able to? That, I'm could. more yeah they could pour it come on like it's the exact same game as life is strange too like is yeah a... so i'm I'm just more curious up to what it, it's more curious than frustrated more of like oh what why not like why oh. i'm just more of like well what's the reason here what's, what, what's, what's going on over there but i don't know who knows i mean at the end of the, at the end of the day we have all of life is strange like all the main lines on the switch, which is a great thing. We just don't have a two hour demo that, uh, you know, spinoff, whatever, whatever you want to call it. You've got life is strange on the switch, which is fantastic. Yeah. I just think it's a shame. I, I, I generally think they could have included it. If, if life is strange to is a digital download ported straight from the other consoles, like why is captain spirit not able to be hearing that? It's like, I just think, yeah, like, but again, it kind of goes into that conversation that I had where my frustrations grow this like. In itself, we've got Life of Strange 2 on a new console. Ne As I said before, never thought that was on my bingo card for 2023, but we got it. I know. But I know. Like, but the problem is that, again, this is like the, the really bad marketing that was done on it. It's like a month period where it was like, and Life of Strange 2 is coming to Switch, and it's coming to this day, and it's like, here's a tra reveal trailer. It's like, hang on a minute. You could have basically almost reset yourself and be like, Right, Life is Strange 2 is coming to Switch. And in the month period, you can pick up Captain Spirit first as a download for free. And you can play it if you've never experienced Life is Strange 2 before. Yeah. And, you know, like, done a soft reset approach of that. Because, like, in itself, even people who played Life uh, Captain Spirit would download it on the Switch store because they'd want it. They'd want it, download it because they've, you know, they played it, but they're going to play it for Life is Strange 2. They have that kind of thing on the save feature where things carried over into the main game. And it's like, yeah. they could have set it up and then, then they could be like, and Life is Strange 2 is now available on Switch. It's like, oh shit, like, we can now download this. In itself, it probably for me. Can I make a prediction about this year, 2023, a games industry prediction? Yeah, go for it. We've we got a long gear going. This is going to be the year of the shadow drop. This is straight up going to be the year of the shadow drop because already it's been Feb it's February. It's not even the middle of February. Well, by the time this episode comes out, it's the middle of February. We've already gotten three major shadow drop games. We have Hi-Fi Rush essentially life is strange too it, it's sort of a sort of kind of a shadow drop it didn't drop that day but it came two weeks later sort of a shadow drop and then we have later on we're going to be talking about the nintendo direct but we already have metroid prime remaster shadow drop i think we're going to get a lot of shadow drop games this year in the games industry because because there was a lot of things that were held back because of the pandemic 
that I think a lot of games were ready or they were almost there and they didn't have time to market this because there were so many work from homes. So there's a lot of remote. A lot of the games industry was held back. So there were a lot of games that were ready. And now they're just like, well, they're ready. We got to put something out. We haven't put out anything in a while. Go do it. Shadow drop it. Bang, bang, bang. So I, I, I think there was a lot of games ready, including Life is Strange 2 is probably ready before this came out. And now it's kind of like shadow dropped. So I think in, the, in this year of 2023, we're, we're going to it's going to be the year of the shadow drop, in, in my opinion. Can I put a prediction on your prediction? Go for it. I would agree with the, sh- yeah, the shadow drop, but also I'm going to say that things are going to get pushed back because of the recession that's coming and also the yes. kind of global factors. So I think like in itself, I've said very clearly, like we spoke about it on Kotaku saying that Banishes could get, um, Banishes, which is a new donut game coming out from with in collaboration with Focus, could get delayed into 2024 Four. because of like, uh, because there's no definite release date. And even when we talk about Harmony later on, there's no definitive release date. It's a window. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I still think that there's a kind of room that things will get pushed back into next year because of what happens. Because when recession hits and we've seen it with like loads of tech industry jobs that have gone from like Microsoft to um, Meta to all these other different companies, they're cutting staff. And they, a lot of companies are now cutting staff because they need to kind of keep their, you know, the balance sheets mm-hmm. up, keep the stakeholders all happy. Yeah. But I think like when you say shadow drop, I agree with you, but I think some things that would like, it could have been the entire year of shadow dropping. I think some of that stuff is going to get pushed back into 2024 because i think the the publisher is going to be like hang on a minute we can't actually afford this if people aren't buying the games they, they now pretty much like every developer is now pushing them up to 70 dollars yeah. or publisher it's like you know that's going to be a big expense for someone who can't afford it necessarily speaking so yes. i think that's going to come into play with it. i think early in the year you might see it but i think it's going to fizzle out towards the end of the year yeah it's it's going to be a mess in terms of video games like it's going to be a good year i think i think we're going to be spoiled as <laughs> consumers and as gamers. We're going to be spoiled because there's a lot of good games coming this year, but it's going to be such a mess with a lot of shadow drops, a lot of delays, a lot of like things we're not expecting. It's going to be a mess. And we're, we're, I don't think we're going to be ready for this year in the games industry. No, I do not think so. But on on a, on that kind of note, I still think, Captain Spirit should be included in the Switch store. They're probably, it's yes. probably logistics. I think it's, it's expensive, like, don't know, probably, no, don't know, Square porting it over. And then, two, um, maybe there's something to do with, like, an eShop charge as well. Like, if they mm. list it again, then it's probably going to cost them money, and it's a free download. Yes. So, I mean, that's going to play in the factor of it. But, as I said, I think it's just a bit of a shame. It's just annoying because, it's like, this is the trend that seems to keep happening with video games. It's like when I bought my Horizon Collector's Edition, I spent 250 quid on it um, with the Master Statue and stuff. And then there's no game disc in it. Like you get Steelbook, yeah. but no game disc. It's download code for both of them. And it's like when you buy Life is Strange Remastered Collection or the Arcadia Bay Collection, Philly Cheese Royalties, um, <laughs> when you get the Arcadia Bay Collection on Switch, you yeah. don't get one of the games, you get code for it. Yeah, you get and code like, for uh, Before the Storm. You get you get the uh, the game cartridge for the first Life is Strange, but you do not get a card for Before the Storm. So yeah. you can never so you get have... Before the Storm used. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it, it diminishes the value of the trade in then. And then you get this example where it's like you can get Life is Strange 2 digital only. It won't get a physical mm-hmm. release. But then you don't get Captain Spirit, which is an accompanying piece towards it. Just yeah. a bit annoying. Like it just seems to be like, again, like the, the kind of thing that I don't like about the industry, but it is what it is. Um, should we kick into our next piece of news? I think so, because I have the page open and man, man, if Life is Strange, oh, I'll let you. Uh, bleh. You go, you go, you you host. Indeed. So yes. carrying on from that Captain Spirit, we're going to Life is Strange 2. So Life is Strange 2 is now out on Switch, officially here, and some of the reviews that are in, and also the Metacritic scores. So, mate, they use a review score. I don't know what's going on there. 2.5 I was going to say, like, if Life is Strange 2 wasn't divisive when it first came out, holy cow. I mate, did. That, wow. That's just, that, that's just a user score, though. People do it all the time. They review bomb things, don't they? But yeah. Metacritic has updated a lot of scores which is surprising and i think i I didn't really see big publications cover this the switch port like Mm -hmm. ign's or game sports i might be wrong having obviously recorded this now or double checking them but didn't really review this because it's currently sitting on a 76 metacritic score with Mm -hmm. six critic reviews Um, and the highest score has got the minutes touch arcade which is giving it an 80 
Mm -hmm. uh, Pocket Tactics, which gave it an 80, and Digital Trumps, which gave it an 80, Noisy Pixel, CG Magazine, and Nintendo Life gave it 70. Nintendo Life is quite a, quite a mm. reputable as, in terms of like the ones I know out of there. Um, but again, it's again a, a question like, I don't think Square Enix really sent review codes out for this. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't think they, they sent any scores. And like I said, it came out so soon and everybody was surprised. Um, I think didn't Michelle like even tweet out like, wow, like he was even him impressed with, uh, with um, this coming out. So, someone from that. Life is Strange like came out, like tweeted. I can't remember, but I don't think anybody was expecting this except for Don't Nod, like teams that Don't Nod, which is, it's, it's wild. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's kind of crazy that none of us ex expect this. So no one was sent a review code, you know? Yeah, like I'm I'm looking on Google News now, and it's like the top stories for reviews are CG Magazine and Nintendo Life. Mm -hmm. Both of those who are on Metacritic. So again, like no big publication has even bothered reviewing it, like a GameSpot or something. Oh, I know that they're not going to put that much priority on a Switch port, for example. But I'm surprised that there wasn't a push on trying to get a, public, a bigger outlet to cover it. Um, I would read the I would read the extract from Nintendo Life, which was a 70 score, and they put, Life is Strange, she was a worthy entry in the narrative series that improves upon the first game in meaningful ways with a story that's both thrilling and emotional. The gameplay hasn't changed much, and we'd argue that some areas have a, have a few too many objects to interact with, but the dialogue choices remain just as fun as ever. Bar some annoying, uh, bar some annoying loading times on Switch, and some visual hiccups. Life is Strange, she was definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of the narrative narrative adventures. Um, just trying to pick out anything that's thingy here. Yeah, so here, here's an interesting one. Noisy Pixels, giving a bit more of an in-depth. The Switch version of Life is Strange 2 is not the best version of this adventure. However, this mm. doesn't make it a terrible choice. The experience is serviceable on both handheld and docked modes. And while the models lack graphically as the game progresses, shadows and dirt make them look more natural. Unfortunately, players won't find anything new or impressive with this port. Regardless, I recommend this version to those who haven't played it before or are looking for a new title to play while on the go, proving that A Tale of Two Brothers is excellent no matter what versions players decide so, to play. It sounds like the same issues as the Arcadia Bay collection on the Switch, yeah. where I played it. I well, I didn't play Life Strange two on Switch. Um, <clears throat> I just, I just haven't yet. Uh, not that I didn't want to, I just haven't. Um, but I, I played the Arcade Bay collection, and sounds like it had the same kind of. And if you go back in the episodes, rewatch some episodes if you want to. I gave my review of Arcadia Bay, and my biggest issue was like you know, kind of what they were saying. Like, it's not the best version, but if it's, you're on the go, you've never played Life is Strange, it's it's playable. It's playable. Like, that's all yeah. I can really say about it. it. Sounds like that's the same problem here. It's like, it's not the best version, but, you know, it does the, it does the justice for, like, playing Life is Strange 2 on the go. You know what I mean? So, I haven't played it yet, so I can't say for certain, but it sounds like it's the same issues as I had with Arcadia Bay, where it's like, if you have an Xbox, if you have a PlayStation, if you have PC, get it on those versions. Um, but if you only have a Switch, it's it, it gets the job done. It, it's still a good uh, port for for yeah. Because like, the reviews aren't diminishing what the game is, because the game is what it is. It's been out for a long time. Whether you like it or not, that's a different story. Yeah, but it's more about the Switch's capabilities, and as you said, Adam, it's like there seems to be issues that have like kind of like carried over from the switch version. And it seems mm -hmm. like the port's not necessarily being handled the best way. Um, the switch isn't the most powerful machine in the world. Like, you know, even though it's very well successfully sold for Nintendo and credit to them to come back from the Wii U with that. But yeah. I think like, it just doesn't seem to be handled necessarily as well. And it just seems to be like a port <clears> straight <throat> over with like, let's just, you know, update here and there. Like if you're going to port things, you have to really put effort towards it. I always say with like the, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy that they remastered and they tried to put on the new consoles. It's like they, they made an absolute mess up with that because they, they did it. And, you know, when they were updating textures and stuff, they didn't change everything. So like, as you saw with the definitive trilogy, go back on Twitter, you'll see all kinds of things that happen. People are like, this is just weird. Like, you know, textures are fuzzy. This text has been changed, you know. So you have to kind of put effort towards it. It's not just a... a 
you know, it just seems sometimes like a cash cow where it's like, we'll just put this onto this platform and whatever else, you know, see mm-hmm. how it goes. It might sound ungrateful because like, at least we got Switch version of Nintendo, uh, we got Nintendo Switch version of, sorry, Life is Strange 2, but there is also disappointment to be expressed because if it's not good enough on that quality, then it should be, you know, mm-hmm. this this question to be asked again, Pocket Tactics, an incredible game that holds up just as well as it did in its 2018 release, but it's held back by the Switch's handheld performance. Mm. And we're talking about 2018 game here, you know, and it's Life is Strange 2, like Life is Strange 2 is not a God of War or like, you know, a Halo, like compared to... yeah. Compared on Nintendo Switch, you think it should be able to hold itself pretty much on its own, but it just seems to be an issue here and there. Um, yeah. Well, but yeah, at least you have it. You know, I imagine if it's anything, it'd probably just be Life is Strange fans buying it so they have it on Switch, but um, frustrating nonetheless. And I think, like, again, like, it's very indicative of the review scores and which publications have reviewed it because it says a lot about not many other big publishers paying attention to it. Hmm. Yeah, no, and, and that's just it. Um I don't think it was marketed well. I don't think it was given out to anybody. I don't, you know, it's just kind of unfortunately an afterthought in terms of Don't Nod. But, you know, <clears throat> at the end of the day, Square like it's no, don't Square know. Enix. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. <coughs> um, but at the end of the day, we can now say that you have all of Life is Strange on the Switch other than Captain Spirits, you know. But at the end of the day, I think that's all they wanted is just like, not necessarily good reviews, but just accessibility. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. let's kick into our next piece of news. And it's just a PSA as well um, from the lovely Miss Kate events. Uh, yeah. He tweeted saying, are you going to be at, uh, are you going to be at the panel at Emerald City Con March 5th? Would love to see you there. So excited to have a fun conversation with Rosie about all things Life is Strange and stuff. <clears throat> Rosie Four also tweeted saying that I'll be at Emerald uh, Emerald City Con this year uh, on Sunday at two PM. Katie Benz and I will be talking about life. All blah, blah, we'll be talking all things life is strange. Come celebrate mm-hmm. Steph's story with us and hear all about the making of the book and audio book. Um, so yeah, if you are there and just a quick discretionary like update there, if you do want to go and see Katie and Rosie Four talk about life is strange and Steph's story and everything else. There's your date, March 5th. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll have Katie back at some point. It's definitely talk about recording this audiobook and whatnot. Um, and it seems to and be I like Katie's giving... Emerald City is in um, Seattle, I believe. Ooh. Yeah. It's Emerald it is City. Seattle. Yes, Seattle. Uh, so, you know, best Life is Strange City to, to go into Seattle. But, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, no, uh, very interesting. I probably won't be here because... Um, flight tickets is expensive right now, but you know, um, good. Like if you're if you're in if you're in town, if you're going to Emerald City, be sure. And if you're a Life is Strange fan, you know, be sure to check out uh, this panel because well, why not? Katie Benz is such a great person. Um, yeah, interesting panel. PSA: go go to Emerald City if you're in town. Mm, indeed, I'm pretty sure that Kate is giving more publicity to Walter's book than Square Enix is, but that's just me. That's just um, you. I, you said it. I didn't. Yeah, that's that's just me <laughs> saying it. But yeah, as I said, Katie's uh, at this event. If you do want to go, do go. It'll be interesting to hear. And as I said, I imagine we'll have Katie back on here at some point this year, hopefully to talk about uh, Steph's story. But with that out of the way, we will talk about our next topic, our final topic for this episode. As I said, a reminder again, we have a 30, 38A episode, which you'll see in the, obviously the title of this episode. And this is, this will be a 38B, which is about a 50 minute interview with Jonathan Panetta in the next week. But we're going to mm-hmm. kick things off with this, which is big news. Yes. Um, and also I have done an individual reaction on my YouTube channel. If you want to watch this, um, Adam offered, but I told him to go and work out. And I was like, we'll talk about mm-hmm. there's more on this podcast because there's a lot to be talked about here. So for context as well, Adam was like dropping me messages as well over Facebook on Instagram, Twitter. Um, no, not, part- not Twitter, because like I said, um, <clears throat> if I can just do, uh, geek out about this, one of the best Nintendo Directs we've had in a long time. Like, this was a fantastic Nintendo Direct, and this is the time where Twitter implodes. And I was, like, trying to mess this ad in this whole time, like, because Don't Not Announce is like, oh, yeah, Harmony. And all the streamers are like, oh, look, this looks okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
And I was trying so desperately to message Adnan, and Twitter's just not there. And that's where we message each other is on, is on Twitter. So I'm like going everywhere, like, oh, Adnan, Adnan. I even posted um, an Instagram message where I was like, Adnan, <laughs> please. <laughs> but yeah, this is the time with like the best N- Nintendo Direct uh, that we've had in a long time. That's when Twitter decides to just not function. Oh my god, freaking Elon! Yeah. I hate him. It was funny because like I was working and like you, as, as Adam said, like you know this is the one of the times where Twitter's imploded. It seems to implode every other day at the minute. Yeah. Um, terribly run. Uh, I will just put that out there. Um, but yeah, I got like I was working and I just saw my notifications and said Adam's like followed me on Instagram and it's like he's messaged me on Twitter and I'm like hang, uh, on Facebook and I was like I, I I didn't even connect the dots at that point. Usually I'm pretty good at connecting the dots. I was like, oh right, he's like he's actually probably signed into these met her own platforms i know if she doesn't <laughs> like him and the next day i just like i'm gonna look at him like he's like, he's like dude he's like harmony's been announced and i'm like uh what and then i, start looking, I, was, like, I was like oh yeah so yeah i was like i was kind of like a bit shocked by it i was gonna i was contemplating at that point to try and do a react towards it but it was like 11 o'clock at my time at that point in the evening and it would have taken me like an hour to record it then on top of that to edit it and then to post it, it probably would be until like three o'clock in the morning, realistically. So, yeah, so I don't too did the next day, and you can go and check that individual reaction out, um, if you want. But as I said, I'd hold the main stuff for this conversation with Adam because you know that's more important because we can yeah. talk about this podcast. So, I'll run you through it if you haven't heard. Um, don't not announced Harmony, the fall of Reveria, Reverie, Reverie, Rev- Reverie, Reverie. Mm-hmm. Reverie. Reverie. Let's go with Reverie. <clears throat> I'm, I'm being, yeah. been struggling with that recently. Um, they put, we are excited to reveal Harmony, uh, the fall of Reverie, our brand new narrative experience at the N- Nintendo Direct. The game will be released in June 2023 on Nintendo Switch, PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S. Um, posted a reveal trailer. They put in the description, Harmony is a story-driven game, uh, unique in its narration style, narration and style, sorry, where you'll be transported to the near future and a universe that is vibrant and wondrous. You'll play as Polly, a young woman who returns home after a few years abroad to search for her missing mother. She discovers that MK, a mega corporation, is using its powers to control the population of the Merid- uh, Mediterranean city of Alma. She quickly realizes that she has a gift of clairvoyance that connects her to another world, Reverie, where the aspirations of humanity live. Uh, Glory, bliss, chaos, bond, and truth. In Reverie, Polly becomes Harmony, a goddess who has the power to choose uh, choose the aspiration that will ultimately rule. There is a delicate balance between our world and a reverie that grows more precarious and an apocalypse looms if that scale, if the scales are tipped any further. But when the link between the two worlds is strong, reverie has a bigger influence on the state of our world. Hmm. It's up to you as it's up to you as Harmony and Polly to restore the balance between the aspirations world and ours humanity estate to which destiny do you aspire so there's also gameplay clips as well that we I spotted on the twi- um on don't know's official web page afterwards which i didn't get to talk about in the initial reaction video but i spoke about this first adam you want to take the floor first <clears throat> i do uh one great announcement like and a great platform like how well could you have timed this that like you're you're going on a really well received nintendo direct so people are going to go back and watch this. Um, I think it was a perfect place to put this at a Nintendo Direct rather than just tweeting about it. Mm-hmm. Because, again, Don't Not is trying to rebrand itself. It's trying to expand. It's trying to make uh, a, a wider audience. So it's good that they dropped this during a Nintendo Direct rather than tweeting it and then hoping that people see it. So uh, kudos to Don't Not for making that move like that was that was a really uh that was a really smart move on their part um secondly wow uh i i was excited for this game in particular when we saw all of the different images on saying like oh well you know we got this game this game this game it had the teaser images this was the image that i was like the most interested in with the color palette the circuit board everything i was the most interested in this game and now seeing it for what it is, 
I'm really excited. Like this feels like a really interesting story. And can I say, reading the description, what a pitch. Like what like what what a pitch. You come home from studying abroad and then you have a missing mother and then you're becoming this goddess and then you're going into this other dimension and they show you how reverie is like connecting to earth and all this stuff and you are between poly and harmony how do you pitch something like that like how it's do you the, come um, up yeah it's the don't nod kind of like pitch isn't it for a story yeah. it's like when they were pitching life is strange one and then like publishers were turning them away because they weren't sold on the on the protagonists or they weren't sold on the story ideas and stuff it's yes. out there isn't it as an idea <clears throat> whereas don't nod is becoming their own publisher they're getting tired of like having really crazy ideas you know now is this being published by don't it's self-published it is self-published so this is the this is the first self-published game that we know from the six that's in the pipeline yes from this uh the scale that oscar gilbert had lined out this is the first of the main six that we know um that's being self-published obviously focuses the inter uh, focus with banishes is the other one but that's the only other um mm. game that they're collaborating with someone the rest are all self-published but this is a self-published don't know game um so, so now we can really see that like when i say that hey we want to be self-published this is why i mean look at the description of this game and <laughs> imagine trying to pitch this to a publisher you know so they're taking faith on themselves and they're going they're making bold moves by putting it out there on a nintendo direct they're they're making bold moves to say like hey we have games and they're interesting and they're nothing like you've played before. And we're just going to put out what we want to play. And you're just going to, you're just going to like it, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And can we reiterate the fact that you made a great point there, <clears throat> which is the fact that they announced it in Nintendo direct, which was already stacked and like loads of people have kind of like put this in the montage and stuff. But I kind of mentioned it on recent podcasts and like, I can't remember where I recently mentioned it, but I said it somewhere recently where, I said that Nintendo Switch is a big platform for Don't Nod, especially that yes. they're, not, they're not restricted to the fact of what Life is Strange, you know, that they're working on Life is Strange games specifically with uh, Square Enix, who are basically releasing them on main platforms. And I said this about Life is Strange 2 being released on Switch, it kind of gives it to a new audience. But Don't Nod's games are bread and butter narrative adventure games. That's what they are. They don't they don't switch away from their, their formula. And those games are built for Nintendo Switch. Like when you told me to play Oxenfree, I was bringing Oxenfree up recently because it's the most ingrained example. Oxenfree yeah. is a game for me that you should put on the Switch. It's built for Switch before any other console. It's that kind of game where I can pick it up. I can oh, take it, it on somewhere. Switch. That's what I mean. So it's like one of those oh, games yeah, where yeah. I, I, if I wanted to pick it up, I'd want to play it on Switch first because like I can carry it around. I can mm -hmm. go somewhere. I can. It's, it's fully story focused. I don't have to worry about huge visual graphics. Don't yeah. need to worry about you know, mind blowing gameplay or anything else. Like, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there playing a hearty single player story game. And that, that's what this kind of game is as well. Like when you look at harmony, it's got mm -hmm. all the essences of basically it's a story driven narrative, single player game. And then mm -hmm. like, that's for me, like Nintendo switch. It's like, as I said, you announce it in Nintendo switch, you've give, got a huge platform to announce yeah. um, a video game out and make it a reveal. Um, and like you said as well, like with the, the logo, this is one that really caught us. We were like, it's futuristic, it's sci-fi, it's kind of like, it could be anything. I think you mm. even said it could be Remember Me 2. It could have been Tell Me Why 2, to be honest. We were thinking yeah. Tell Me Why 2 was thinking. <laughs> that was like yeah, one right. of the, the, we were pretty much convinced that like, everything was Tell Me Why 2. But yeah, we kind of got an idea that this is the one of the two logos that don't have teased in there in their initial tweet from uh, last month. But it's quite exciting for that. Um, I did mention something, Adam, in the um, in my national, my, uh, reaction video which i kind of want to ask you for your two cents on which is i said that it's very interesting that this game is released for current gen consoles only so there's mm -hmm. no last gen console release there's no xbox one there's no playstation 4 now for me that's kind of a very big statement from don't nod because it makes me think that even montreal's game might not be last gen obviously when they released life of strange one even with square Enix, they they pushed to get it on ps3 for example and xbox 360 that game was released on those platforms yes but this game is now released on um current gen consoles and to be honest i'm surprised they didn't put it in last gen because they kind of capitalized on sales like it would have been huge numbers for that but yeah do you think this is going to be the trend for don't know that the rest of the games are all going to be self um well going to be self-published on current gen consoles only mm -hmm. and then also do you think they should have made it current gen and last gen consoles it's hard to say because uh there could have been like hardware issues because I, I i know if you ever read by the way great book to read 
um blood sweat and pixels a uh, great book by jason schreier talking about game development and the struggles behind that the particular chapter i'm thinking of is dragon age inquisition and um when ea came out and said like hey it has to be last gen as well oh man they, that was that was the turning point in development where they're just like i it's too difficult to put it on both when we have this vision to put it on this console now we have to take steps backwards it it, it doesn't really fly well with developers it, it's just kind of like putting a like like a little ball and chain on your ankle i don't know but um now could they have capitalized sure they could have but I think it's also um, going to tell that, like, hey, we don't really care about, you know, making sales. We want to care about putting the best product out there. Um, and I, I think their moves of just trying to self-publish and put out wacky ideas is part of the reason why they haven't put it on extra consoles. Because, one, yes, you're right. I think they could have capitalized sales by putting on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 but they didn't want to. So they're not going to, but I didn't want to. I mean, that's, they didn't want to face technical uh, frustrations that square yeah. Enix would have put them through. Um, so instead of going through that, they just want to focus on giving us a great story rather than, you know, putting on other consoles. Now, um, does it hurt the consumer who has not uh, gotten an Xbox one? Uh, uh, Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, arguably, yes. I, I think that is a detriment to people who haven't upgraded. Um, but if you have a Switch, I don't know. It does suck. Like, I get both sides. But I think it comes down to they didn't want to face technical uh, hitches. You know, I, I think it comes to that rather than focusing on making the most sales. No, I agree with you with that. I think, like... As a as a publisher, this this game's kind of like not to be disrespectful, like lower on their pecking order of games that kind of like are the sales drivers. Like the focus one is obviously the highest one. And then oh, yeah. underneath that for me it's the Montreal game. Like they're the two that are kind of like the expectation is higher on them for like sales, revenue, for kind of like the big hitters. And mm -hmm. then this kind of game is like there where it's like I think they can kind of be like looking at it and be like, if it's a twin mirror, for example, and it doesn't do well commercial, commercially, it's not going to affect our fundamentals as a company. Like, we're fine with that. Because as I said, Don't Know is kind of like venturing into uncharted territory right now, where it's mm -hmm. like six of their games are now going to be self-published. Like, yes. there's, there's no, there's no, you know, safety rug at this point. If, if Life is Strange bombed, it's on Square Enix at that point. Square Enix has put the money up. Don't Know's like, we gave you the game, we made it, etc. It's not an issue for us. And this is like the issue with like, we don't know, it's very well aware of its history of Remember Me. Not a bad game, no issue with that. It's more about, it's, it's a commercial failure. Commercial, you yeah. Deal with a studio, a publisher like Capcom, who's ruthless, especially in terms of sales and what is considered bad and good. And like they, they, they're they very critical of Resident Evil, for example. That kind of gives you any kind of gauge of it. Um, it's they're, 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 You're going to be in risky territory of like what you're dealing with as as a publisher. So I think like, them personally, as you said, it's probably more about the logistics. Mm. If they went on last gen, they're probably going to be limited by what they're doing. It's going to cause all kinds of like, you know, different technical issues in itself. I think now this is the year, I think kind of prediction of what you said about the, the shadow dropping 2023 is the year that you see less last gen games coming out. Yeah. I think most publishers are moving away from that. Hogwarts Legacy has obviously come out on the recent console, on the latest consoles, and then three months later, it's coming out on the last gen consoles. I'm yeah. surprised with that. So I think like most publishers, are you now going to see moving on to the current gen consoles because they can slap the price of seventy dollars anyway. The yeah. Price has gone up now, so it's like it's not really much of an issue. They make footfall on it, and people start yeah. moving on to new consoles and stuff. So I don't think it's an issue. That says I, I was kind of struck by it at first because I just thought I don't know it might take the kind of like you know risk of like let's get it on. Let's get it on all the consoles. Let's try and get as ma maximize as much sales as possible. But it seems like not to yeah. be the case. Um, One last before thing we kinda... about. Oh, oh I was I was going to even go. say, um, <laughs> because it's self published. Um, like, like you said, uh, there's a lot of things that publishers will make you do in terms of um, when you said before that the pecking order of where this all is. If anybody like is out there saying like, oh, modern AAA games, they all just feel the same. They all they're all just the same game. Blah blah blah. I'm like, 
Yes, because of exactly what Adnan said. It's like they they need to get the money back in some way, some fashion. So in terms of like what games to publish to get their money back, they know what works. I think you made a great point on Banishers, you know, is a great one because, you know, it's very action, combat heavy kind of adventure. So it, it would sell well in the right setting. So it's a safe bet. Whereas yeah. Harmony, not a safe bet. And it's not the it's not a game that you see often. And that's exactly why they're doing self publishing because they're tired of trying to pitch it to um to a publisher that's only gonna make the safe bets. Yeah. And that's why you'll see a lot of AAA games be the same thing over and over again because they need money. So if you want different games, you gotta support indie artists or uh double A studios like Don't Not is right now. So uh yeah, that that's exactly why. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's, it's I think it's just as you said very early on, the kind of pitch and the idea and the concept of the story and stuff like it's so wild to try and sell yeah. it to a publisher like that in itself, like they as I said, I think they're willing to take risks with this game out of the out of the portfolio of games that they've made. Like this yes. is the kind of one where it's like if it does well, it does well. If it doesn't, you know, whatever. Like we got we got yeah. our game, we got the IP, we can do something else, etc. So I think like that's the kind of thing that they're, they're happy with. Um, before we go into some of the gameplay stuff, obviously there was a reveal trailer, which was quite cool. Um, but I kind of wanted to go with June 2023. Do you think it's going to make that window? It's wild. Um, it, it, that's, a, that's, the, it, that's a very interesting release date because it's not saying 2023. It's saying, it's not even saying summer 2023. It's saying June. <laughs> And it doesn't yeah. give a specific date. It just says June 2023. So I feel like if it is delayed, it's going to be to August just to give yeah. them a little bit more time. I don't think you put out a month like that unless you're just like, yeah, it's playable. We're just fixing some hitches here and there. Um, but we have the concept ready to go. They just have to do the final polishes. You don't really give a month unless you know that, like, hey, it's going to come around this time. Not even, like, summer of 2023. Not even 2023. They they have a specific month. So I would say it's going to come out June 23rd. Like, yeah. probably, probably that. Like, probably later June. But I think we're going to stick to it, if not, like, into July, August. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think it's going to be mid to late June. If anything gets pushed back, it'll go to July at the latest. And if, if it's a drastic pushback, it's it's uh, August. There's no yeah. way this game's coming out in the holiday season. It'll get it'll get smashed no. to smil uh, smithereens by all kinds of games that are coming out, big blockbuster hits. Don't know they ain't going to risk that. They're not going to try no. that again. Like, there's no point in putting a game out in, in uh, November, December, uh, October. You're gonna, gonna you're asking for a bruising. And I, as I said this before as well, one of the things that publishers are very well aware of is that GTA 6 is in development as well. And yes. if that drops at any point between September, October, November, December, which it will as well at some point by Take-Two Interactive, I will guarantee you now you can come back to the podcast. Dev publishers will move back their release dates or they'll move yes. that game. Nothing is going to come out near that game because nope. they know at that point your sales your sales are going to get absolutely cannibalized. So, And they've already kind of alluded to it. People think that potentially they could get a release date announcement later this year or something. You know, there's no, you never know if take two interactive, but it's like, it's yeah. one of those where that's kind of like a warning for them. They, they're, they're not going to put it on the, in the window of like mm -hmm. in the holiday season where Spider-Man or something else comes out from Sony. It's just not going to do well for them. So no. I think realistically the, the, the late June window is probably is going to happen or, or push back by maybe a month. Um, At the latest, I think like yeah. Them, yeah. And I think them, I think them not giving a release date specifically is probably just to cover their own backs. If anything, don't know. Um, which would be a smart decision anyway. Um, Adam, first video. Yes. A uh, little clip on Don't Know's website if you do want to go check it out. Um, branching dialogue or branching system. Of it looks kind. like a branching system similar to um, uh, Detroit Become Human. Where, okay, so <clears throat> if I can read this paragraph right here. Go for so, it. Decide your destiny. As Polly or Harmony, as we've discovered the same um kind of character here uh each action you take will affect both worlds and send you down a sprawling narrative path so that's why i'm thinking it's more like 
Detroit, see into the future and explore the consequences of possible choices in our girl, a game board uh, and a visual representation of Polly's gifts of foresight in pursuit of whichever destiny you desire. You'll also bond with and obtain uh, crystals from your aspirations, from the aspirations. Sorry. Uh, these will unlock different paths and important crossroads that will change how the thread of the story unravels and ultimately the fate of humanity. So we've seen this kind of a uh, thing happen in video games. Um, um, like I said, I'm thinking of Detroit or even more recently, <clears throat> excuse me, or me more recently, um, uh, as dusk falls, which was, which came from a developer behind quantic dream. So this branching story, which I'm wondering, <clears throat> I wonder <laughs> if like somebody like took inspiration off of quantic dreams, kind of like, branching paths or even saw any of that and said yeah we could do something like that with like foreshadowing or um um uh clairvoyance is the word that they're using um but yeah so i i think this is kind of wild to think about so i'm thinking i'm thinking yeah this is like not like a um, quantic dream where you see the actions play out as the level ends like oh this is what you could have done but i think with the clairvoyance action What's wild about this game mechanic, I think you can just press the start menu and then look at this map while you're playing it. And before you even, like I said, look into the future. So this is an interesting mechanic in terms of story, uh, story-driven story games where you get to see <clears throat> where your actions will take you, how many choices you do have, where it will take you. So I think this is kind of absolutely nuts to think about that you could just press the start menu and see where your actions go before you even make it yeah no you're, you're up and i think like it's interesting you mentioned detroit because detroit is a very good game from quantic dream and obviously quantic dream is uh the french brotherhood of uh french brethren for don't nod so i wouldn't be surprised if they took some kind of like inspiration from what they did with the the system because like in, in don't nod's a bit um sorry uh detroit's a bit different because like you only find out the branching system at the end of each chapter so then yes. it'll tell you like all the different like it's like duh, 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 and it shows you like this kind of like infographic with the path that you chose essentially yeah and then you have like they don't give you the kind of like early indication like for example of this which is showing you this is the way that you can kind of go you just know that when you play in detroit things can take any kind of different direction you can take the story down this route but this seems to kind of like add its own spin to don't nod's game if anything but this is what don't nod's strength is going to be like they're not they're has has Donut ever really been a gameplay kind of game a, a mm. game developer? But like they don't they don't drive on gameplay mechanics like hugely. Like it's the look at the rewind mechanic from Life is Strange, yeah. um, Life is Strange Two. Like you know the the essence the essence of like story driven games is there, and it's like with with a unique mechanic with this. And this seems very fitting for a narrative driven game. Like you can have all these different paths, and you can like open as you said the menu, and it shows you, you know, da -da 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 -da, this is the path you're taking. Mm. That's yeah. really cool, and I'm. I'm I'm more sold having seen this now in the game as well, which I've, I was already kind of like, you know, thought this was kind of a cool concept, but this is kind of like just amplifies how cool it actually is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so far, like from what we're seeing about this, I'm definitely getting this on switch than any other console. That yeah. definitely seems like a, like something I want to play on the switch <laughs> more than my Xbox for sure. But so the, the other two clips in here, a very brief to show you kind of like the the, the way that this the, the game is set up with um interactions of like dialogue and cut scenes um very graphic novel-esque i feel like that's the word that i missed off of um my initial reaction video which is it's it it very much feels like a graphic novel this game rather than you know the bog standard don't yes. game it, it, and, 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 I, and i don't know if you, if you agree with me or not i said this to i do the, yeah on the um on the reaction video this doesn't seem like a don't visual game. novel it, is it, the is the term for for a game uh, yeah this but yeah this is a this is very much a visual graphic novel kind of game mm -hmm. it's not it's not a graphic novel by in the in the, the um traditional sense but it's a visual storytelling novel kind of st the way that they're doing it but do you agree with me like i said on the podcast um on my on the uh reaction video where I think this is a game that doesn't feel like a don't nod game at first. Like when you look at it, it feels like completely out there. It feels different from what anything they've ever made before. Um, no, yeah, it's like um, it definitely is a more of a of a Japanese game development uh, kind of style. Very visual novel, very uh, Danganronpa almost. Uh, more more of that, maybe like that Persona kind of feel. 
it could be even like inspired from Persona because you have these two different worlds that you're going after. You're not necessarily going to school or anything like that, but uh, it's definitely got that feel of more of a Japanese style uh, game development where it's a visual novel. It's all about um, like your interactions with characters and more character branching rather than gameplay in of itself. So uh, they definitely take a lot of inf- inspiration off of that so I, i'm 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 really stoked for this now uh the other ones yeah like a colorful world and uh find new heart of humanity it's <clears throat> it's really cool just to see like how this game is going to be playing out and like you said like it's not going to be walking more than it is just branching and mm-hmm. i don't know <clears throat> excuse me i think it's just going to be based on cutscenes. Rather than you actually controlling a character, like walking through a world or anything like that, I think it's going to be cutscenes. And like we have one picture on here with uh, Polly walking in front of like um, like a uh, building, like a very colorful building with palm trees and all that. Uh, do you think we're going to be like there's going to be any walking? at all? Like we're going to control Polly in that Ooh. way, or do you think it's only going to be cutscenes? I think it's going to be cutscenes. I think the the main essence of the game, you'll play through the branching dialogue system, which you can do it, but I think the entire game is going to be told through the story artwork, or this yeah. uh, visual storytelling. I think it's going to be basically like, as you said, like a, a, a pay, folding page where it's like, duh, 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 you kind of move on to scene after scene after scene. Because um, I've, 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 I've had the time to play like these kind of graphic visual novel style games, and it's like, it's pretty much like, no, it's just dialogue and text, and then you can yes. move into the next part of it. So I think, yeah, I don't think there's a new walking in this. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of interesting because you're going between two worlds, and it definitely is set in the future for sure. Like it's definitely set yeah. in like the distant future because we even see some uh, gameplay. We see an older Max Caulfield right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the picture with the guy in the hoodie uh, looking at his phone to a hit to his left. There's an older Max Caulfield right there. I don't know if you see that. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah. So it's definitely in the future. Um, <laughs> I wonder if that is supposed to be Max Caulfield in terms of like, like a little Easter egg. Like that will be that will be plenty of Easter eggs. I imagine it's don't. Yeah, know. that's not Max, little... but like they made it similar enough that yeah. it's like a little nod. Uh, but they don't nod, so <laughs> I don't. I don't know why they would nod to that, but. Um, no, I, I'm very excited for this game. I, now, here's the biggest question. Here's the biggest question. It's going to be on Switch, and it's going to be on all consoles. Will it go on Game Pass? Because I, I think, I think it might be on Game Pass. I think it's going to be at launch. Of, at launch, yep, day one. Because the Xbox is uh, investing in a lot of Japanese titles. They are investing in well. This is I know this is French. Uh, but Japanese in terms of like gameplay style, um, like uh, for for example, they they dropped on Game Pass Hi Fi Rush, which is very Japanese style. It's made by Tango GameWorks, um, but I I think they're investing a lot into these types of games, and they've already had a relationship with Don't Nod in terms of Tell Me Why, so yeah. <clears throat> it's not going to be published by Xbox. But I think that partnership will go in, and I think this might day one drop on Game Pass. I don't think it will. I you don't think, think so. I, I think the the relationship with obviously the Tell Me Why one was that they published it so they could put it on Games Pass day one. <clears throat> I think with this, yeah. I don't think it's going to come to day one Games Pass. I think it'll come to Games Pass at some point, but yeah. not yet. Um, I'll be surprised if it comes to PS Plus as well. That'll be this is the big question with Don't yeah. Have Games as well now when they're self published. It's like, will they come to PS Plus, for example? Like we saw Vampire on PS Plus. Yes. So I, I can I, I can very much imagine that Don't Know is going to start striking um, deals with these publishers like Sony and Microsoft about like getting games on their major kind of like platforms. But I think yeah. personally, not. I think they kind of, as I said, I think they're going to kind of like leave it out there and be like, if, I, if someone wants to buy it, someone buys it. If someone doesn't want to buy it, you know, Aho will kind of go off it. Um, Lena Rain is doing the composing for this, by the way. I know. I, I, I know. Right. Okay. Oh. That's a different reaction that I had. I was, I was, I was like, who's Lena Rain? What? I was like, all right. How do you not know who Lena Rain is? Oh my God. <laughs> Celeste? Oh my God. No, no she. Uh, I, oh my God. Okay. So if I can just look up, make sure that I'm right on when. No, I was so excited. 
when Lena Rain was doing this. I forgot. I I totally forgot until you put it up. So Lena Rain composed, of course, Celeste, which is my favorite. But she also did uh before I look it up, it's uh, chicory with the one with the with the coloring. Uh she did that. No, it's <laughs> Just an insane, talented composer. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm on Lena Rain's uh, site. Uh, yeah, she did uh, Chicory, uh, Minecraft, uh, Caves and Cliffs, Guild Wars, Moon Glo- uh, Moonglone Bay, Delta Rune, Sackboy, Celeste, uh, Re- Renowing. No, her soundtracks are absolutely insane. Well, well scripted, well produced. Uh, what else? What else? What else was Guild Wars? A lot of Guild Wars, Snow Flight. No, I was very excited when they said, like, yeah, composed by <laughs> Lena Rain. I'm like, bro, yes. Uh, no, you have to. Have you played Celeste? No. <laughs> Play Celeste. Oh my God. It's so good. No, pl- Celeste is so good. At least listen to the music. At least <laughs> do me this favor. Just listen to the Celeste music. It's so nice. Uh, that and Chicory. And uh, for some reason, I thought she did one other thing. Um, also, ooh, man, I should I should get this right. I'm pretty sure Lena's, it, uh, her, her pronouns are her. Oh, boy. I hope I'm getting this right, please. Uh, creator, it, she doesn't have her uh pronouns in her Twitter, so I'm I'm hoping. Sorry, I'm sorry if if her pronouns are they. I'm sorry, but um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's really good. Her 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 music is like absolutely fantastic. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I geeked out. I yeah. geeked out there for a second until you reminded me. No, very 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 classic, very good. Very great composer. Yes. Okay, I'm glad that I got that reaction. Because I, when I did my reaction video, I was like, Lena Rain? I was like, never yeah. heard of Lena I did, I, I'm it was sorry like, I didn't have time to watch your reaction. Um, yeah, I would have got I, a bro or, message off you, wouldn't I? I'd be like, bro. Yeah, yeah, you you know would have. Oh, I would have torn you to pieces, dude. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, she's she's very uh, well-versed in the video game pet soundtracking. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. No, I, 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 I caught up on her. Um, after this announcement was made and then started looking up what she'd worked on. So um, nonetheless, obviously, it'd be nice to hear, get more of my, my kind of like uh, understanding of her will come from this game, if anything. Um, but yeah, I didn't realize. But I also big... pay more attention to the composing world than you do. That's true. Like, yeah, that's true. Because I would like to be a composer. So of course I'm in that world. So um, I don't blame anybody to be like, oh, who's Lena Rain? I, I don't really blame anybody. I'm Again, I'm being facetious. Um, just in the same way of like, if somebody doesn't know who John Williams is, but like, if I played you Star Wars music, oh, you know what I mean? I get why you wouldn't understand the names. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get you. I get you. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, um, very exciting, this game and I'm keen to see more of it. And I imagine we will. Um, Adam, I'm sending you a link here. Mm -hmm. I think. No, not having it. No, uh, no, it's not having it. Grab this <laughs> again. Uh, do, 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 do. Grab, grab it from Twitter. There we go. So, one of our list, regular listeners, Dreamwalker, popped up in my DMs before we recorded, and he said to me, "He said um, I heard something about a project code named Ada with a concept mm. art that looks kind of similar Ooh. to Harmony. Maybe it's the same kind of project, or maybe Ada got scrapped entirely." Uh, in your new video, you mentioned a lot of people who worked on Harmony years in the past. Um, so this, um, so that makes it more likely to me it could be Ada. Um, well, wow. you also put you also put those links can also be found by Google searching "Don't Not Ada," so they're not super secret anything. Um, but still, it's not quite the same as an official announcement. I'm not entirely sure what it is to be honest. If it's too shady, <laughs> too shady for your podcast, that's fine. Um, too shady. <laughs> Nothing's no, 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 no. He's right because, like, the thing is, though, for this, like, it could be very early original concept art for the game. This game could have been something completely different. The only other thing that I know is that with developers like this, and especially art stations, sometimes with the portfolios, they just make things, 
and like yeah. put them on online. So it's like with um, and the, the, obviously the main telling thing is that it's don't nod watermarked in the corner. So that's kind but of it's telling don't you about nod, what. It's don't nod eleven. If you see in the first uh, yeah. image, don't nod eleven. I don't know if that's an actual team. Does it say um, which don't nod team did harmony? No, it'll be it'll be one of the it'll be one of the French divisions. This is Leroy. Uh, vanilla like my, my <clears throat> only thing is like yeah it could be very early artwork for a game that they're making or one that they had made or it's very similar to something like um harmony but there's also kind of things where it's like it could just be artwork from the the art art developer who's made this for example or the the developer who's made it like there's no guarantees that it's it's specifically related to a don't know project mm -hmm. um yeah because i'm um... oh go for it go for it no, because I was going to say, like, I mean, Emma Vicelli, the Life is Strange comic book writer, she draws all kinds of things and posts them on Instagram. And she just, like, puts yes. things out there. So it's, like, usually, like, anyone who's, like, an artiste or anyone who's in that artist. kind of, like, realm of things, they'll just put things out there online, June, just as a portfolio kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm trying to find that, um, I'm trying to find that, uh, that video where they just, um, they 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 drop those images in the uh, to kind of announce their games. And I'm trying to I was trying to find that video to see if any of those images, um, like matched up to this kind of art style. And I just can't find that uh, video just yet. Yeah. So. Also, just on top of that as well, how strict NDAs are in the video game industry. This, yes. for example, like this artwork would never see the light of day. Like it just would never. True. True. Like you, you would, you would not like a developer would be caught dead before they even put something like this online. Like they're so strict with things. Like usually projects get leaked sometimes early, but it's like when people sleuth on their LinkedIn's and they find out certain kind of like code names and stuff. But like anything that's like artwork wise or you know uh, yeah. concept art for a game, it'll be pretty much locked under deep. So I imagine it's 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 concept art from a developer who worked at Don't Nod for many years, and they're probably thinking of. Maybe it's early concept of a certain game, and they've kind of now just been like, you know what, I can upload it online because it's my work, it's portfolio work, I can share it with whoever I want. Um, yeah. So I just kind of wanted to highlight that, though, and I did appreciate him sending the message as well because, you know, got it to us before Strange Cast. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Adam, you got anything else to add before we. Uh, no, I, I just looked up, like, there's like. There's one with like a cartoonish falling stars. So I'm still like looking at his image. I'm like, it could be. But like you said, NDAs are pretty strict. Yeah. That, yeah, this, especially with Ada. Like, is this like a like ca character name? Is this a like name of a game? So, and then there's Don't Not 11. I don't even know about a Don't Not 11. I don't even think that's if it's a new division or if they've done something in the past. I don't even think that's like a real thing. It but, could be anything you know, to be honest. Don't on eleven. As I said, it could be. It could have been a, a game very early in the work, so it could have been the concept thing for Harmony, and it's like now being oh, it was very wait. early into. Don't not eleven is another branch, and this was an article back in twenty sixteen. Don't not eleven games. So they made a game called Battle Crew Space Pirates only on PC. So mm -hmm. they also they made a game back in 2016 called Battle Crew, and apparently they are a division out of Don't Nod. Is a Battle Crew Space Pirates is a competitive multiplayer shooter set in a packed and evolving universe, and it doesn't look like this is on IGN right now. So if um, if Harmony was if Harmony was developed by Don't Not Eleven, I think they would have included that in the page of IGN, but it's not there. So, mm, maybe They've probably restructured a lot of things since 2016 as well. So Don't Not Eleven might not even be a thing anymore. It might not be. But when was this uh, artisan was uh, made six months ago? Posted six months ago. So. I don't know. There, there, there's a chance this is real. There's a chance this is just a concept art, like you said, that somebody put up. Leroy Vanilla, you know, like you said, uh, Emma Vicelli 
does images all the time doesn't necessarily mean it's real or anything. It's just concept art. So it could be just something. But the but like you said, it's watermarked there. Don't not eleven. It's yeah. already there, and Don't Not Eleven is a thing, and they made a game back in 2016. It's probably it's probably really early stuff that they worked on, which can now be posted. Yeah. So it's like a post embargo, kind of like stick it on online. You can use it as a portfolio kind of thing. It could be an old game from Don't Not Eleven, which never saw the light of day. Don't Not Eleven might not be a thing anymore. Um, there's too many like different caveats with oh, it. As I said, found the video. Sorry, I found the video. Oh. I'm looking. Uh oh. Hmm. Maybe, 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 maybe. Sorry, I'm just going to link you. Um, I'm going to link you the tweet, and then we can like look at the. Sorry, I'm I'm like geeking out over here, so I'm going to link you that uh video again. I think it could be the uh, part if that if that image is real, it could be the third uh video. It could be the third logo. In this uh, Don't Nod announcement video where they uh, show off the different uh, games that they're announcing. Could be the third one with the Falling Stars. Because we know that uh, Harmony is definitely the one with um, like the colorful branching paths. But if you see that third video with the Falling Stars, I don't mm. know if you see it. it that Ada it could fall into that. So... This could be a first image, and or like you said, it could be not. Right now, we don't know. We don't know. This is not official, but this is a good find because, again, Donut 11, like you said, could have been branched out, or they've been restructured and re like revitalized to make a new game for Donut. And we might have seen like a first image right here, right now, of this kind of game. So. Uh, yeah, so, uh, unfortunately, video people don't see this right now, but, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Art station, art, yeah, art station slash artwork slash. Who is Leroy Vanilla? Let's have a quick look at this. Yeah. So Leroy Vanilla, Leroy Jenkins, Leroy, he's <laughs> low. Uh, Leroy is based in Paris. Uh, oh, well, hmm. Yeah, but, you know, we're seeing a lot of things. Don't Not Entertainment. So there's another image they posted from Don't Not. Ada. There's another one from Don't Let's look at that email, and the email's Leroy Vanilla as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, there's some um, NSFW right there. That's cool. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure who who this person is and whether they work directly for Don't Nod. Because I, I looked on their Instagram, it says Leroy Vanilla. Here we are doing art for video games and films. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. This it's definitely tricky. It's definitely tricky. But it like, might be a freelancer. It might you have be. To remember that. Could like, be a freelancer. Pro but like like I said, like it's the fact that that Don't Nod Eleven. Why did he? Why did he watermark? Don't not eleven. If don't not eleven hasn't been a thing since twenty sixteen, you know what I mean. Could be an early project from don't not eleven that they scrapped. Maybe like, we're not going to do it anymore. As I said, I, I I find it very highly unlikely for a developer to put artwork on the game before it's even announced. I, I I can't remember the last time that's even happened from a video game developer. Like the, the, there's too many NDAs and too many strict agreements in place for you to kind of even upload anything that you work on prior to an announcement. That's why you kind of see developers' reactions on Twitter when they're like, oh, yes, this game's been excited. And I was they're so excited because it's the first time they can actually talk about it, having signed like 1,500 NDAs when they've walked into the studio. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, nonetheless, it's interesting. It could be one of the current games. It could still have existed. But as I said, it could be anything at this point. It could be an early concept from a game. It might be something that Don't Know Eleven had worked on and they kind of scrapped. It could yeah. still happen. But... It's interesting to look at, though. So good find by Anthony. Uh, thanks for your support. Anthony's um, Dreamwalker. Yes. Oh, I thought you said an Anthony. Sorry. No, I said Dreamwalker. You've done Dreamwalker, don't you? Though? Yeah. Well, Dreamwalker has been doing in the work. Like he, like they've been just like going after the VHS tapes. They've been going after this. You know, th they've been putting in the work, man. So <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah. So it's interesting. It's interesting whether it's real or not. 
We don't know, but it's definitely an interesting concept to look at. So very true, very true. I think we should wrap up there. Um yes. you'll go to spread the arts. Uh before I go into spread of the arts, I need to make one single um victory announcement real quick. Oh, can here I we make, go. Yeah, can I make one victory announcement? Yeah, yes, you can. Is that um Michelle Co has purchased Ali Ali World. It's happened. It's happened. You see that I'm wearing shorts. I don't care. But all of the Don't Not team is getting into Ali Ali World. Why haven't you? It's time you play Ali Ali World. Has Michelle played it yet? We don't know. But we know he's purchased it because when I tweeted, just here to ask if Michelle Co has played Ali Ali World, Michelle replies, I st- I didn't even tag the man in this, so uh, I still didn't play it, but I now own it on my Steam Deck, so now, so the time to, when I play it has become closer. Adnan, I'm talking to you. Why haven't you played Ali Ali World? It's on PS Plus. Why haven't you played it yet? I have it downloaded. You have it downloaded? Yeah. <laughs> play Ali exactly, World. I'm exactly like Michelle. I have it downloaded. Just do it! <laughs> Make your dreams come true. So this is my victory lap that people are playing Ali Ali World because of me. So thank you. Good night. Play Ali Ali World. So spread the arts, huh? Spread the arts. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big win first. It's a big win that. It's a big uh, win. It's a huge win for Ali Ali World. Yes. <laughs> um, do you want to go first? Um, uh, I have to think of mine because I was just in, I was in that little <laughs> bit of a high right there. So uh, I had something and then I just went on a tangent. I'll go first then. Yeah, so my, my recommendation for this week, which I watched um, earlier this week, is that South Park season 26 has premiered and they've uh, debuted their first episode, which is called Cupid Yee. Mm. Um, and I would fully, fully, thoroughly recommend it. Um, obviously, you know that Kanye West is the punching joke of this episode, and it is outstanding, nonetheless. These these two, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, do not miss the beat at all. Um, so basically, the, the concept is that the, uh, Cartman accuses Kyle of running Hollywood. Because mm. obviously Kyle is a Jew. <laughs> and that's the, con- <laughs> that's the idea of it, and it's like based around that. And then, I don't know if you've followed South Park, but Cartman has this like little Cupid character that follows him around every so often called Cupid Me. Ooh. Oh, but Sorry. My phone just Carl has off. this little character, that little angel character called Cupid Me that follows him around at certain points in the in the series. And it's now called Cupid Ye. So it's, yeah. it's a mock on Kanye West, where it's genuinely outstanding, 100% fully recommend it. They're, they're so clever. Like, even the ending credits, they've changed it all. Um, <laughs> it's brilliant. But yeah, 100% recommend it. I don't want to reveal anything else. You might have seen a couple of clips on, online, but they they do a number on Kanye West again. Kanye West is like 3-0 and in South Park at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Honestly. my recommendation uh you know what i'm gonna just straight up and just recommend uh the next guest who's coming on to uh strange cast coming on next week uh i'm gonna recommend jonathan panetta who is a artist on spotify uh we talk about uh, his one track make use of your time which is on spotify uh if you don't know that's the image right there so I would recommend Jonathan Panetta. Uh, he does have an album out called Stop and Think Now, which does a lot about delves a lot into anxiety, depression, racism in uh, in the world. So I definitely recommend going to listen to Jonathan Panetta. So you know, definitely go check that out. And you have time; you have a whole week to listen to Jonathan's works before we interview him on the next episode. So. Jonathan Panetta is my recommendation. Yeah, very nice that, and we'll we'll wrap it up here as well. As I said, um, and I'll say it again as well, like as a, this is a one-off kind of like special strange cast. We have first thirty-eight A, which is this episode. Thirty-eight B will drop next week after you get this one, which will be our full-length interview with Jonathan Panetta, which is about fifty minutes. Um, definitely one to check out as well. You'll, as I said, we want to kind of spotlight him as well. We didn't want it just to be kind of like attached to this episode like in the the last two uh, last two hour run of it so we decided to split it up 
But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said before, if you are new here, please do consider dropping us a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share with your friends. Help to keep up to date with our content. We're close, slowly climbing to a thousand subscribers, literally within touching distance. Um, I have considered making like free YouTube accounts to try and get there, but I've decided not to. Um, not want to get in trouble at this point. But yeah, if you can subscribe and you are new here, as I said, it really will appreciate. Really will appreciate it. And also, as well, Strangecast is available on all podcast services, so do check that out. Um, one more thing as well. This is a PSA as well about Life After Strange, so I need to kind of be very transparent and open with this. The project's stressing me out in itself. Like, So basically in itself, a lot of actors have kind of gone back to working full-time now. Like, you know, the pandemic is over by that mm -hmm. kind of stretch of the imagination, that people are, are back to their work. And with 30 episodes plus since that series, we've had over 30 actors, something that I never achieved at this point. But that podcast will become a legacy podcast on this on this channel. So basically what it means is, like the reaction videos I've been doing at the minute and also Strangecast will be the main bread and butter. Life After Strange will be a, a kind of like a legacy podcast. When you get an episode, you'll get one. I don't know when that will be guaranteed. I'm going to try and get another one, hopefully reach out to someone soon and see if it can get something arranged. But it's just not... It's not going to be the flagship show of this of this um, this channel anymore. It's just because mm. it's running its kind of distance at this point, and it's kind of like just been difficult to kind of get guests up there. It's been stressing me out, kind of like thinking, oh, when we, when we will get a Life After Strange episode. So for transparency's sake, it's basically Life After Strange will come to this channel when and where it comes. Whether mm. it's a new Life After Strange that comes out, we kind of get new guests on, or whether it's down the road. I don't know. There's no kind of exact dates, but one thing you'll be guaranteed is that there's episodes regularly from Strangecast. That's the one guarantee I can give you, um, as well as reaction videos when, where, where and when I can do them. But Life After Strange will just take a backseat at this point. It's going to happen when it happens. That's the only kind of message I can give you. So I just want to put that quick PSA in here before we mm. wrap up. So that's just for clarity's sake. Uh, but yeah, until then, as I said, stay tuned. You'll get episode 38B later. Next week, not later this week. Next week. So stay tuned for that. Until then, we'll see you later, guys. Peace.